Okay, so sometimes you might get some situations where you need to do some factoring with rational exponents. So I'm not sure how many of those kind of problems you might have seen before or done practice with. So I want to go over a couple of them here uh, just to bring everybody up to the same page. So let's do this one. We're going to uh, look at the factoring, factoring out a, a common factor first, and then we'll see how if we can factor more after that. Now, when you have a fractional exponent like these, what you want to do is you can only pull out the smallest exponent. So whatever the smallest fraction is, and so out of these, three halves is going to be the smallest. That's the one that I'm going to take on the outside. So I'm factoring that one out, and so I'll get something else here. It's going to be equal to zero. Now the part that goes in here, how do we figure out what that's going to be? Well, when you do a factoring step and you take something outside, what you're really doing is division. So you can think of this as the first term, because we're pulling out x to the 3 halves, you can think of it as doing this. And so then if I work this out, you're subtracting the exponents here, you're still going to have the 6. And then with the x, you have 7 halves minus 3 halves. That's going to give you 4 halves, and 4 halves is 2, which means now I know I've got to have an x squared on the inside. Let's do the next one. I have an x to the 5 halves, and I'm dividing this by x to the 3 halves. So again, because you're pulling something out, it's the same thing as division. You're going to subtract these exponents. 5 halves minus 3 halves will give you 2 halves. So minus x to the first power, and that's all we can do on that one. Then finally we have 15x to the 3 halves, and you're dividing it by 3 halves because you're pulling it out. Subtract these and uh, x's are going to cancel, so you get a minus 15 left over. So by taking this out, you get this as a result. Now of course, what you can do is you can multiply this back through again to see if you did this all correctly. And if you were to multiply this back through, 2 plus 3 halves will give you 7 halves. You multiply this one, multiply that one, you'll be able to get the same thing that you started with. Now you want to make sure you factor these down as much as possible. This is something that we can do another factoring step. So we're going to do factoring on the inside here. Now it might have been a while since you've done factoring, so I'm going to do a, a review of this. For a lot of these problems, the easiest way to do it is going to be by trial and error. So what I mean by that is you're going to look for numbers that multiply to make 6 and numbers that multiply to make negative 15. Numbers that multiply to make 6, you can either try 2x and 3x or you can try x and 6x. There's different combinations, but I'm going to start with 2x and 3x. For 15, we have a choice of doing either 1 and 15 or 3 and 5. I'll put a 3 here and a 5 there. Very rarely will you have the same number in front of the x and the same number here, like 3 and 3. You're probably not going to have that situation happening very often. So that's why I chose to put the 3 over here instead. Then I just need to make sure that when I multiply it out, I get a negative there for my leading coefficient, negative 1. So if I do that, if I, do, if I multiply this out the way I have it here, I get a 10 and a 9. So if I do a plus here, That'll be a plus 10 and a minus 9. That'll give me a positive, but I don't want that. I want negative, which means i got to switch these. So I'm going to put a plus here and a minus there. So then when I multiply it, I get negative 10, positive 9. You'll get negative 1 here, and then you'll get negative 15. Last thing you want to do is set all three of these factors equal to 0. x to the 3 halves equals 0. 2x plus 3 equals 0. 3x minus 5 equals 0 setting all those equal. For this one, to clear out that fractional exponent, you're going to raise both sides to the power of two-thirds. You basically just want to raise it to the reciprocal of that one because that way when you multiply the exponents, you'll get a power of one there. So that's how you do that. Or we just know that zero raised to anything is zero, so we can also get it that way. Okay, so x is zero. That's one of our answers. For this one, if you solve that, you'll get negative three-halves. For the last one, when you solve it, you're going to get positive 5 thirds. So 0, negative 3 halves, and 5 thirds, those would be your three answers for this problem. Okay, so here's another problem that involves these rational exponents. When you do a factoring step on this, you're allowed to take out only the smallest power that you see there. So it means that I'm going to pull out this whole thing, 2x minus 1 raised to negative 1 half. That whole thing is going to be what I'm going to pull out on the outside. So this whole group raised to negative one half, 
that's what I'll factor out. Then, what's left over inside, these brackets here, I'll just get a negative 4 left over there. Now, for the 1 in the end, again, when you're dividing here, it's kind of like you're doing this one and then 2x minus 1 to negative 1 half here. Whenever you, you factor something on the outside, take a common factor out. Again, it's like you're doing division. So I'm going to do 3 halves minus negative 1 half, and you're going to get 4 halves, which is going to be 2. So what you're left with is 2x minus 1 squared on the inside. Again, you can always multiply this back through, and you should get the same thing that you started with. But we're not done yet because it says factor completely. So we want to expand this out and see if there's a way that we can factor that. Now, you could expand it all out, and this is what I did uh, in the notes, but there's another way you can do this also. If you recognize that this is a difference of squares, that might make it easier to factor. So what I mean by that is you could do 2x minus 1 squared minus 4, and then this is something that you can actually use difference of squares on because we got something squared here and this number is also squared. So what that'll look like is you can do inside here 2x minus 1 plus 2, 2x minus 1 and then minus 2. So again it's a difference of squares here. Plus 2 and minus 2 because of the 4 right there. So you could either expand it out like I did in the notes or again this way might be a little bit easier and the last thing you're going to do is just uh, simplify all that. So 2x minus 1 to negative 1 half. Now what I'll do is, let me actually rewrite it this way. Let me put that on the bottom. 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power. You can either write it as a 1 half or what you could also do is you could write it as a square root as well. So uh, either way you want to do that is fine. And the last thing we'll do is just write this out on top. So I have uh, 2x minus 1 plus 2, so 2x plus 1, and I have 2x minus 3, that's going to go on top there, and this would be considered fully factored. You got the part that's factored on top, you could leave it, leave that one on the outside if you wanted to, or again you can rewrite it, rewrite it like this where you have a square root on the bottom.